You're listening to episode 57 of Liz's Healthy Table. Looking for a healthy new way to feed your family without the hassle and hype? Welcome to Liz's Healthy Table, where your host, registered dietitian nutritionist Liz Weiss, serves up fresh and flavorful recipes with a tasty side of science, good nutrition, and fun. Are you and your family ready for some wholesome food that tastes great, too? Don't change that dial. Your food adventure starts here. Welcome to the podcast, everyone. On today's show, we're celebrating the best and brightest that summer produce has to offer. I want to know what's growing in your garden. What's for sale at your local farmer's market? What summer fruit or vegetable are you eating and eating and eating and cannot stop eating? And for me, it's cabbage. I know you're thinking, cabbage? It's not tomatoes. It's not corn. It's cabbage. The lowly cabbage. Yeah, I know, I know. But I'm going to give you a recipe for grilled cabbage that will change your life. I promise Hang tight for that, because I'm going to give you that recipe in just a few minutes. But in the meantime, my guest today is Wendy Reinhardt Capsack. She's a mom of three, a registered dietitian, and she's the president and CEO of the Produce for Better Health Foundation, PBH. And PBH is dedicated to helping consumers live happier, healthier lives by eating more fruits and vegetables. What could be easier? And while today's show is all about fresh summer produce, I want to remind you that frozen, canned, dried, even 100% fruit juice all count toward your daily fruit and vegetable consumption. Now, it sounds easy, but most of us, um, 90% to be exact, still struggle to get enough fruits and vegetables into our diets. You know, we know fruits and veggies are delicious and that they're versatile and they're healthy. But getting your greens and your other colors can be tough. And that's why I wanted to dedicate an entire episode to this topic. And summer, of course, is the perfect time to do that. Now, PBH recently launched a new campaign. It's called Have a Plant. And the campaign is literally an invitation to all of us to eat and enjoy more produce. Their website is fruitsandveggies.org. It's chock full of recipes and resources. And so Wendy and I will share a bunch of recipes and resources that you'll find on their website, but also on my website. And we're going to talk about some of our favorite produce, things like carrots and watermelon and zucchini, even jackfruit. And we're going to give you lots of snack and meal ideas that are going to keep you pretty busy for the rest of the summer because we have a lot of ideas that we're going to share with you. Now, before I welcome Wendy onto the show, as promised a couple minutes ago, I'm going to tell you about cabbage. Now, there's this farm. I'm spending most of my summer on Nantucket. And there's a farm out here. It's called Bartlett Farm. And six days a week, they have a little truck that pulls up into my neighborhood on the island. I live in Sconset. And out of the back of the truck, they sell whatever happens to be growing. And so a couple of weeks ago, I stopped by and I got a bunch of things, including cabbage. So this big, heavy, green cabbage. I didn't know what I was going to do with it. But I decided... I was going to grill it. I actually had had a salad earlier this year. I was at an event. It was actually sponsored by Avocados from Mexico. It was a dinner event. And they were grilling cabbage and avocados and peaches and pineapple. And they made a salad out of it. So I started Googling grilled cabbage. And I started to experiment. And now we have been eating it constantly. Simon, my 20-year-old, he says, Mom, When I go back to college, I need to know how to do this. I've got to do it in the oven. I don't have a grill at school, but i got to figure out how to do this. It is so good. Because when you grill cabbage, it caramelizes, right? It sweetens, and it gets really tender. And I'm telling you, it's like the perfect side dish, vegetable side dish to have with anything else coming off the grill. It could be chicken. It could be beef. It could be a seafood. You name it. Or you could chop it up after you grill it, and you can add it to salads. So I've been doing both. 
So here's what you do. You get your cabbage, you put it on a cutting board, and you slice it in half. Now, that's the hardest part of this whole recipe because you're kind of slicing halfway through, and you really have to sort of pull your knife out carefully and rotate the cabbage and then sort of slice halfway through on the other side because it's a pretty dense vegetable, and you're going through kind of that root end, right, the stem end, rather. And so once you slice it in half, you then lay both halves on a cutting board flat, cut side down, and then you cut each of those half moons, if you will, into four wedges. So you end up with eight wedges. And because you have that stem end, it holds it together. All I do is I take two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, mix it with just a clove of garlic that I crush. You can mince it. You could use a garlic press and just crush it. Stir that together. And then with a little pastry brush, you know, I just brush both sides of each wedge with this olive oil mixture. And then I put two big pieces of tin foil on my kitchen counter and I lay four wedges over one piece of foil, four wedges over another. And then I top those four wedges on each of those pieces of foil with kosher salt and pepper, a little bit of chopped fresh herbs. It could be thyme, it could be rosemary, it could be nothing. And then I take an onion, maybe a quarter of an onion, cut it into little slivers, kind of just throw the onion on top, and then I fold up the edges. I take another big piece of foil and kind of wrap each of those packets, if you will, and I end up with, I'm using like two or three big pieces of foil for each of those packets. I kind of create these campfire packets, right? And then I put the packets directly on the grill, and the grill is heated to medium, close the grill, and then I just let them cook. And it takes between 25 and 28 minutes. And when they're done, I take them off the grill. I carefully open up those foil packs. And then I just transfer those eight wedges onto a serving plate, a platter, and we're done. So it's incredible. It's easy. It's delicious. And I cannot stop making this grilled cabbage. Okay, enough with the cabbage. You can go to my blog, Liz'sHealthyTable.com, head on over to the blog. You will find the recipe, and I'm going to give you a link in the show notes. And in that blog post, I want to know, what are you grilling this summer? Is it avocados? Is it peaches? Is it zucchini? Is it corn? What's cooking on your grill? Okay, Liz's Healthy Table. It is brought to you by my friends at SuperHealthyKids.com, your one-stop shop for recipes, meal plans, cooking videos, and tips for feeding kids of all ages. My show is also brought to you by the Parents on Demand Network. This is an app filled with fun and educational podcasts, perfect for parents. So whether you have a toddler, a teen, or you're expecting, you can check out all the shows and the app over at parentsondemand.com. So if you have a bumper crop of zucchini growing in your garden right now, this is the episode for you. Wendy, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. It's a great pleasure to be with you and all of your listeners today. Great. So why don't we just begin by having you tell us a little bit about yourself. Let's start with work life. You work for PBH, Produce for Better Health Foundation. Tell us about PBH and tell us about what you do. Sure. So PBH, or the Produce for Better Health Foundation, is a 501c3, which means it's a nonprofit organization. And it's really the only nonprofit in the United States that's 100% every single day committed to helping people live happier, healthier lives by eating more fruits and vegetables in all of their glorious forms every single day. So glorious forms meaning fresh, yeah. frozen, canned, they're all glorious. I think so. Yes, <laughs> I do. I do too. <laughs> so yeah, fresh, frozen, canned, dried, and a hundred percent juice is okay. included. Very good. And you're mm -hmm. also a mom. So because a lot of moms listen to the show, just tell us how many kids you have, how old are they? And of course, do they love fruits and vegetables? They better. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have three kids um, and there's Drew and he's 12 and he's getting into his teenage years. Um, so I could use some advice from all the other moms out there. He's a great kid and really into soccer. So he's the athlete of the family. Um, then I have Evan and he's 10 
And he is really more of the Stillwaters, Ron Deep kind of kid. Mm. He's really into Harry Potter. We just got back from Universal Studios in Florida. And he also sings and plays guitar. He's a great baseball player, too. And then I have Ava. And she's amazing, amazing Ava. She's eight. And I really delight in seeing her and all of the opportunities that are open now for girls that I think it's really different than when I was younger. So she's number three. So the birth order thing runs true in our house. She is the social butterfly and she's also really silly. <laughs> and the fruits and veggies piece, is it easy at the home front there? Are they happy to eat their fruits and veggies? I have to say this is like so annoying. Yeah, they are. It's okay. Um, it's okay. You're and, lucky. Uh, yeah, I am. But you know, not everybody, like many families, not everybody really loves the same thing. So definitely have a lot of the same struggles at family meal times where, you know, you kind of have several people going in different directions and maybe even wanting to eat different things. So that part is very, very much uh, the truth in our household. Mm. Yeah, because you can end up running ragged, you know, if you're making different meals for everybody. But I always just say like, two vegetables on the table, at least, you know, you have better luck getting your kids to eat at least one mm -hmm. of them, right? Yeah, absolutely. Give them all the options. So I think you do have a very cool job. I'm personally am very obsessed with fruits and vegetables, my favorite foods in the world. And you know, if you look at things like the dietary guidelines for Americans or my plate, there's this overall recommendation to fill half your plate with fruits and vegetables. And that mm -hmm. on the surface sounds easy. But in reality, I don't really think for a lot of people it's easy. Because if you look at the data out there, it kind of tells us that people are nowhere near meeting the goal. So can you just give us a little bit of the science on like, how many people are actually eating their fruits and veggies? Are we eating enough? And who's the most challenged out there? Mm -hmm. So, you know, as the president and CEO of the Produce for Better Health Foundation, I'm a registered dietitian, just like you too, Liz. And, you know, fruits and vegetables are a favorite topic of mine. They're favorite foods of mine. But you're absolutely right in that not everybody is enjoying them to the greatest extent. So if we look at the trends out there, you know, really consumption has remained flat over the last several years. A lot of people think, really, really? you know, they see all this interest in lots of different fruits and vegetables, them coming to the forefront and so many different types of cuisines or dietary, you know, trends. And we might see an uptick, let's say in a commodity like avocados, but then we might see a drop in something else. So hmm. we do have our work cut out for us. So kids two to five are really the only ones that are meeting the recommended amount of fruit intake. And so, hey, that speaks great to all of our moms out there who are really, you know, fighting. I don't want to say fighting the good fight, but I think you know what I mean is mm -hmm. really making an effort out there to make sure that the kids get fruit. And because fruit is somewhat sometimes more portable and it's also sweet, kids love it. And so it's an opportunity that we could carry on, I think, into those other years. Males, in this case, that are six and above, they're consuming about one cup of fruit a day. Female, six and over, are consuming a little bit less. And then regardless, though, most of us are consuming around one cup of fruit a day. And then for vegetables, it, this is much more variable. And I think this speaks to a lot of the challenge around how people view vegetables. A lot of our research really points to some of those. I know we're going to get into that. But, you know, most of the males out there or boys, young men, they're consuming less than a cup a day and females are consuming less than a cup a day. So, you know, if we think about the previous message of the Produce for Better Health Foundation, which many may be familiar with, it was something called five a day. Mm, right. And we say to ourselves, okay, most people are consuming about a cup of fruit, about a cup of vegetables. That means that most of us are consuming not even quite half of what the recommended amounts would be. And so, you know, we have this aspirational goal at PBH of trying to double consumption. And so we'll need lots of folks on the ground there helping us achieve that. So we really, as consumers, we need to double. That's a good message, mm -hmm. right? We need to double our consumption. And I feel like summertime is such a great time to do that because there's, you know, seemingly more options out there, more fruits and veggies out there. And so like, as we look at summer, I figured, hey, let's do a summer produce show, which is kind of what you and I will talk about today. But as mm -hmm. we look at summer, do you have a favorite 
right now? Is there something that you're like, oh my gosh, we're eating this every day and we love it? Because I know for us, it's, we love, like I love radishes, not raw, but I love roasting them. So there's certain foods that I haven't even had watermelon yet this season, but we're doing peaches big time right now. Yeah. So are there like fruits and veggies that your family is kind of gravitating to now? <laughs> you know, you're right. There are so many fruits and vegetables out there right now. The challenge is many people have a different routine than they typically do. So that can be kind of the offset. But there's so much out there for you, radishes. For us, it mm-hmm. absolutely is watermelon. And so I remember even when I was pregnant, I remember telling my husband, I have been thinking about watermelon all day. Not you, (laughs) watermelon. (laughs) And so for us, it's watermelon. And my middle guy in particular loves watermelon. Obviously, it's very satiating in terms of hydration as well. So a great one for your sports kids out there. And it's also really easy to cut into different shapes and make that really fun too. So you can grill it, you can do so many things with it. Mm -hmm. And we'll get more into that a little bit later. But I will say, Wendy, when I was pregnant, And maybe this reflects the personalities of my kids. I don't know. But with Josh, (laughs) the older one, he's a little more serious. I would crave Granny Smith apples and pineapple, a lot of fruit, a little tart. And then with Simon, the younger one, it was this so weird and random bubble gum. And he's a little (laughs) sillier. And of course, Rice Krispie treats. I totally had to have those. Yeah. I remember sending Tim to the supermarket to get all the ingredients for those. And he's British and he was like completely flabbergasted. Like, you are insane, lady. I have no idea why I'm buying these ingredients, but I will do it. Whatever you command me to do. Because I love you. (laughs) Yeah, exactly, exactly. (laughs) So produce for better health. You know, you mentioned this five a day program, which I think people can relate. Oh, yeah, I remember back in the day, five a day. Do we really need to eat five servings of fruits and vegetables a day? Or does it really depend on our age and our gender, it sounds like we probably should be eating more than five a day. You know, this is where we kind of look back at history and say, okay, yeah, I see that progression. So back to your point, back in the day, Produce for Better Health Foundation created the five a day program. And this was significant. I mean, this was absolutely an important public private partnership. And it really was looking at those baseline recommendations of five a day. Then we moved on to something and it was called fruits and veggies more matters. And so you say, well, why did you even move from five a day if people weren't eating five Mm -hmm. a day? Right. Because it did have a lot of brand equity in those years. And so the interest there was that to your point, the dietary guidelines changed somewhat and said, you know, for some people, they don't need five a day. They might need nine to 13. Well, gosh, that seems like a significant hurdle to get past. So there is some variability, if you will, in terms of the recommendations. This concept of more matters was, you know what, can you just get more than you did before? There's something to that still. But really what we have spent the last year doing is really looking more at what today's consumers, but also the next generation of fruit and vegetable consumers and their parents. So those millennials and Gen Z's, what's the new approach that's going to really engage them? Hmm. And in addition, we looked at behavioral science to say, what can we learn from the fields of psychology and other types of behavioral science around choice so that you know, maybe we could achieve even just five a day. So I always say five a day is always going to be important. It's a great baseline. More will always matter. But now we're moving on to something that's really meant to go beyond the quote knowledge. You need half your plate, five a day, more matters for your health. To this concept around emotional well-being and the immediate feelings that you can um, experience from consuming fruits and vegetables And then what types of messaging or, you know, content can we use to activate or help consumers do? So we've looked at the behavioral science. And so our mantra is no feel do. And that now has uh, sparked a new campaign for the Produce for Better Health Foundation. So you've moved past five a day and fruits and veggies, more matters. And now you have a new program, a new campaign called Have a Plant have a plant. Tell me about have a plant and how that is going to move the needle and get all of us hopefully eating more fruits and vegetables. Sure. So have a plant is rooted in both behavioral science and extensive consumer research. And it was really created to answer consumers call for simple, straightforward conversation and dialogue that gets to their emotional 
drivers or their emotional needs around fruits and vegetables, and also getting at the root of what all fruit and vegetables are, which is plants. So we all know there's, there's a big kind of trend out there or discussion around plant forward or plant based cuisine and fruits and vegetables, uh, they really deserve to be the star of, mm -hmm. of that trend. I would love to kind of have a little conversation about summer produce because that's sort of how I build the show. <laughs> oh, and yeah, talk about yeah let's talk about <laughs> summer produce. And I'm thinking I'm going to throw three foods your way. You could throw three mine and just we'll each give an idea or two for each of those foods. And so the first one I want to start with is carrots because not the baby carrots that come in the bag, but those carrots that you pull out of the ground. Maybe you see them at the farmer's market, or maybe you just bought a bag, you know, a one pound bag of carrots at the supermarket. But what would be an idea, something that your family loves, something you love for carrots that are inspiring and interesting and yummy? Okay, so we're doing this more rapid fire, right? Yes, like, we I'm are, ma'am. Throw it out there. I'm you throw, throw it out, it I'll throw it back. Okay, cool. So I'm going to say for visual appeal, but also for some texture, is to shave it long ways, curly cue, and make some of your salads really pretty. Mm. And then another, op maybe just going one step further, is we just came back from Disney with our kids, and we did a character breakfast, and they had amazing glazed carrots. And I know you're thinking, what? Glaze? Is that healthy? <laughs> I think it's better than not eating any carrots. And so they were quite delicious and everybody at our table loved them. Hmm, I love that shaving. So just get your vegetable peeler and make these long shavings, throw those into a salad. I love that idea. Kids will love the curly cute. Too. Yeah, I mean, it's cute, right? Like who mm -hmm. doesn't love cute and little crunchies, right? And they're super mm -hmm. skinny. I'm a big fan of roasting vegetables and I do love yes. just peeling and cutting carrots into like, you know, half inch or three quarter inch pieces and then toss them with olive oil and salt and pepper and maybe throw in some fresh thyme and then just pop those in the oven, maybe 425 and then just mm -hmm. roast them. And then I always like to turn them halfway through and it might take anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes till they're really fork tender. But that mm -hmm. brings out their natural sweetness. And yes. so those veggies, you feel pride. Now they become really sweet. So there's your little happiness hit from those. There you carrots. go. Love yeah. that. Love that. Love that too. And I think in the summer too, the carrots are even sweeter because they're fresher. Especially if you see them at your, you know, CSA or your farmer's market, grab a bunch and go for it. I did notice Eating Well magazine. I don't know if it was a month or two ago, their cover picture was these gorgeous roasted carrots. I forget what the topping mm -hmm. was, some kind of like tzatziki glaze or something yummy. Okay, watermelon, we talked about it a little bit earlier, and it's a great snack, just as is. And when I was a kid, we would spit the seeds at each other. And now, of course, you know, they're mostly seedless. <laughs> so where's the fun there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but what would you do? Anything special you might create with watermelon? Well, I'm going to give you two. So I, and most families are, I would think, age appropriate. I, we're in a shark week over here. So I'm going to go, and this could be super fun, Pinterest fun and social media too, is I'm going to celebrate shark week and carve uh, watermelon like a shark, <laughs> <laughs> big open shark mouth. And of course we can do watermelon, but we could have some real fun with that and maybe make something, you know, that the kids I think would love that. I think you could put a little goldfish on the side and that could be super cute. <laughs> That's cute. The other one I would say is grilling watermelon. We just did a fruitsandveggies.org. We have a whole bunch of ideas on meal planning, but we also in our newsletter just did a whole piece on grilling. And a lot of people think about the vegetables on the grill, like zucchini on the grill, for example, or, you know, corn on the cob. What about watermelon or we didn't talk about peaches? I'm bringing in another one. That's here, okay. But yeah. no, bring in the peaches. Bring them in. Yeah. Yeah. You said that they were so prevalent right now, too. So, yeah, whatever's in season, let's try something new and put it on the grill. And I grilled pineapple recently, which was Delicious. so good. Yeah. Totally made it even sweeter than it was. So... With watermelon, I'm going to make it into a homemade Hawaiian punch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just cubes of watermelon, and then I'm going to pop that into a blender with some strawberries and maybe a squeeze of lime juice, and mm. maybe just like a little hit of honey. And hey, why not a little mint? And maybe the mint I'll just use as garnish, but I'm going to blend that all up and make like a watermelon juice. And oh, got to throw in some ice cubes. So that's going to be a really refreshing summer drink. That like, why have the Hawaiian punch, which is totally fake and artificial, we're going to do watermelon instead. 
You could probably freeze that as well, right? Mm, popsicles. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I Why like not? that idea. I would add a little pomegranate juice if I did that because the pomegranate juice, like the Palm Wonderful, is so deep and intense in color. Mm-hmm. And that would make it even more vibrant in color. Yeah. Yes. And I we like. with we eat with our eyes too. Absolutely. Yeah. So the prettier, the better. And then my third one for you, and then I'm going to have to have you throw on my way, is zucchini because summer gardens are always bursting with zucchini. If you have a neighbor (laughs) with a garden, you're lucky because you will always have zucchini left on your doorstep. So what might be one or two fun things to do with all that zucchini in the summer? Well, I mentioned we could grill it. We can also spiralize it or we can buy it ready-made like that and make it into noodles that could be done, you know, a little heat or also as a cool salad. We could also have it cut it a different way and make it long style pasta noodles, for example, for a lasagna. You know, we can always pop it into salads for some crunch and do some of the typical things that folks are familiar with. And I'm even going to say, you know, if you want to make it a little fun, you want to, you could consider, I'm sure you have a recipe for this, is you could bread it and do something fun with it there. Hence, I say you could put it in the oven, but you could also maybe fry it for fun too. But there's so much you could do with zucchini. And like, there's more than zucchini bread out there. I'm just going to throw that your way. (laughs) And zucchini muffins. Well, I'm going (laughs) to steal an idea from Katie Morford, who was on our show a few weeks ago on prep, her new cookbook. Yeah. Katie has this recipe for a zucchini lasagna. So she makes the zucchini, turns those into noodles. So she slices them really thin, but sort of long. And then she bakes them. And then she's got some tofu in there that she also bakes and some marinara sauce and some cheese. I think mozzarella. So she does this really cool lasagna with zucchini noodles. And the other thing I love to do is just to dice it, cut it into a, a tiny dice and saute it. And then you can add that to anything. You could add it to quesadillas. You can add it to omelets. You could make soups out of it. I have a really yummy summer minestrone on my website. And so zucchini, kind of the sky is the limit. Yeah. I like it. I like it. So throw a food my way because I started by throwing all these fruits and veggies your way. Is there a favorite fruit or veggie out there that's on your mind? I'm just going to throw this one out there because it is considered such a trend, up and coming trend. And it's in that specialty produce category, and that is jackfruit. Oh, okay. Any ideas? (laughs) So I have not yet bought jackfruit on its own, and we'll have to post a picture in the show notes from today. It's this like (laughs) giant fruit, and it looks really funky on the outside, like green and kind of like really rough looking. And then people will bake it, and then a lot of vegan cooking, people will use it as like a meat substitute. So I have purchased jackfruit already kind of prepared and in like a barbecue sauce at the supermarket. And then I've used that as a filling for quesadillas. And the texture, I haven't warmed up 100% to it yet. It's a little bit, I don't want to use the word slimy because that is a horrible, horrible word in the culinary world. But I'm curious to hear what you've done with jackfruit. So I just came from the United Fresh Mm. Produce Show, and that was in Chicago. And we were looking at a lot of the different new products out there. So you mentioned a few, you know, different bowls, for example, that now all of that produce is essentially prepped for you. All you're going to do now, let's say if it's a breakfast bowl, you're going to add an egg or something like that. So there was a lot of that, a lot of fresh cut items, you know, taking the prep work out of it. Mm. One of the areas that was jackfruit, and you hear to your point a lot about it. You hear a lot about it in food service and culinary, a lot of chefs, you know, experimenting with it. But it is just not practical to buy a big jackfruit. <laughs> big, and, we're uh, talking yeah. big, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so there is more effort now from a lot of the specialty produce companies in doing a lot of prep with it and making it ready-made. So for example, it does tend to maybe like tofu in some regards, take on a little bit of the flavorings. And so some people are really making it into almost like pulled pork style, but in this case, mm-hmm. pulled jackfruit. And that, I don't want to use, you use slimy, I'm going to use stringy, that stringier <laughs> type of texture. And then almost to your point, using it as a meat substitute. So you mentioned quesadillas, I'll mention nachos or mm. that kind of thing. So yeah, I have not been as adventurous with it myself, but now that there are more products that make it less intense from a 
first of all, you need like an axe to chop I was going to say thing. a machete. So, a machete comes yeah. in handy. If you've got one, <laughs> let us know. So, But that one, you know, people will hear more about it, right? And so to let people know, there's a lot of experimentation done, but there's also recognition by the produce industry. Hey, people need a little bit of help of getting started with this one. So how can we turn a little bit of that machete time into like, <laughs> let's just open it <laughs> and have some of it fresh cut. And, you know, what's the nutritional value? Do you know anything about jackfruit in terms of the benefits? Yeah, we have a whole page on it on our site. For every fruit and vegetable pretty much out there, we have what we call Fruit and Veggies 101. So we have a whole site on selection, storage, serving, and then what I like to call savoring, and so some connectedness to various recipes, et cetera. So our website, fruitsandveggies.org, there's a lot of third-party contributors on the site, Liz, and we need oh, you on the site too. Really? really? Yeah. Oh, it's stuff okay. you're already doing, which is fabulous, which is, and all your guests as well, you know, give you some love out there and connect people to your great information about how families can actually not just know fruits and vegetables are healthy for them, but actually activate on their intentions and actually feel a great sense of joy, accomplishment, et cetera, by, by feeding them to their families. So we would love to have folks contribute to the site and expand that resource base for all of our more than a million social media followers. Well, maybe I need to do a snack board post for you. I'm thinking, I'm thinking Definitely. some sort of snack board post. I'm just completely <laughs> hooked on those right now. Can I just say that like for our moms out there, people would laugh at me when I had littles and this was kind of a go-to and it was, maybe I was just before my time with the snack boards, but my kids, you know, we would be in a hurry or something, but we also wanted to have fun. And so what I would do is literally I would put out a picnic blanket. Okay. So now we're excited because we're doing something in the family room. We're going to eat. It's going to be on the floor mm -hmm. and I would create these snack boards that had fresh dried fruit, maybe, you know, some whole grain crackers, cheeses, nuts, you know, all these other fun little finger foods. And maybe we would use paper plates or we would, as a family, we're eating off the snack board. And then I would just take that blanket and shake it out outside and get it ready and put it in the laundry. <laughs> and I was done. And everyone had a great time and it was joyous. So it can be involved or not so involved. Mm -hmm. I like that. And I've also seen a lot of moms take muffin tins and fill yeah. each muffin tin with one of those little nibbles. And that's sort of the precursor to this snack board trend. So I think our kids are teaching us a thing or two because adults have so much fun as do That's kids right. eating off a snack board. And, and I think, you know, in the summertime, you could do like a berry board or you could do, I mean, it's just like the sky's the limit, really, when it comes to, you know, all this summer produce. But that leads me to my next question, which mm. is just another quick little lightning round. Okay. And that would be just giving people some quick tips. So we talked a lot of recipes, but let's each throw out like three quick tips in the summer for how do you mm -hmm. use summer to your fruit and veggie advantage? And so I'm going to start with my free farmer's market scavenger hunt. And I don't know if I shared this with my listeners, but I have this free download and you print it off and then you go to the farmer's market with it. And there's like eight clues on there and you challenge your kids to run around the farmer's market and read the clues and find the foods hidden within those clues. So they're going to be searching for beets and berries and kale. And so it's just a fun, interactive way to get your kids excited to be at the farmer's market, not just like walking around behind you, but actually searching for foods. So I'll put a link to that in the show notes, but go to the farmer's market and bring along that free download. I read that, by the way, last night, and it is so cute. And I really do think that kids would love that. And we know, too, from a lot of the research that when kids are involved in those food decisions, and that's a really fun way than saying, pick what you'd like to have for dinner, to get kids mm -hmm. really excited yeah. about the experience of a farmer's market, and then also grabbing all the, the great products and produce out there. So that's a really great resource. So I'm going to say that some ideas here is you've already mentioned one and that's related to, we've talked about grilling. And so whether that's fruits or vegetables, both can work really well. And there's a lot of great tips and tricks on all of that. But really that one too is kind of the sky's the limit. Like don't be afraid to try something. 
Another one I like is really looking at this specialty produce because most kids are going to pick up a dragon fruit, which is a beautiful pink Mm. hue, and it looks kind of crazy and fun, or a star fruit. And so they're usually around the banana sometimes. (laughs) It just depends on your store. But that's a way to excite and inspire and then be really fun with it. So even if you're, you know, picking them up and just getting kids to pick things up. So I'm going to say you could do some of the same things with specialty produce. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, we haven't talked about this too much, but it's other forms of produce. And there's so many smoothie kits out there right now in the frozen section that I think are really can be a great jumpstart and then maybe inspire you to try your own things. And you could also, you know, even have like your own smoothie bar at home. And that's got to, you know, if you have kids at home over the summer, that's got to, you know, at least kill it a good hour mm-hmm. <laughs> in the afternoon and then freezing maybe some of that, like we talked about before and making popsicles. That's fun. But what about road trips? And so we haven't really talked about canned fruit cups on road trips and those can be a real easy thing to do. You can also make them into little like people or monsters in advance of the road trip if you wanted to get some of your littles really kind of creative and then getting excited to kind of open them up if you had a little stop along the way. Another opportunity for dry fruit would certainly be you know, creating your own trail mixes. And you've probably heard that, but you can put them in a bag and then put a clothespin kind of in the middle and make little butterflies and stick some sticker eyeballs on there. And now we've made it more fun. (laughs) So lots of opportunities, certainly with fresh produce and exposures, either at the farmer's market or at other retail. But if we think about being on the go, there's an opportunity for some of these other frozen items fruit cups, for example, or even dried fruit as part of a trail mix. Right. And I'm with you. It doesn't always have to be fresh. And I do, though, love kebabs. You know, you were talking about these fun presentations. You know, when my boys were younger, you know, two boys always battling. I was not totally psyched on the whole kebab stick thing for them at, you know, when they were like cooped up in the back of the car. But they're very fun if you want to kebab up all that fresh produce. And I like the idea too of starting a container garden. I do not have a green thumb, but I have the aptitude that I could do an herb garden. I'm thinking of doing that this summer because I keep going to the supermarket and buying herbs and I'm annoyed Mm -hmm. because I don't always use them up. So starting an herb garden would be really good in the summertime and kids would love that, right? Get their hands dirty, get out there and hey, pick some mint and let's throw that in the smoothie. So that's another good one. Wendy, I've had this one thing in my mind because you mentioned jackfruit, but I'm curious what you think in 2020 is going to be like the hot vegetable or the hot fruit because it was kale for sure. That was king for a while. Cauliflower was super hot, you know, and these are still super hot, but what's like the next big thing that we're going to be hearing about and wanting to embrace in 2020? Mm -hmm. I've thought about this a lot. The dragon fruit bites was one that I do think people are going to hear more about, less so in the culinary world where you have to create, but rather now with these fresh cut types of products that take out some of the prep work Mm -hmm. is that I think you are going to hear more about that. I think you're going to be hearing more and more about specialty produce. So as a 501c3 uh, nonprofit organization, we do get support from what I would call the broad-based fruit and vegetable companies, some of whom are big brands that you mentioned one throughout our conversation today, and then some other what you would call like, you know, our smaller growers. So I'm always seeing new products come out. You know, there's man packing, for example, has these ready to, you mentioned them too, breakfast bowls with Mm. veggies. And so this is so simple. And there's also some new products, particularly that are looking tomato related products, more that snacking size tomato that are also now really able to put into pasta. And so it's almost like this ready-made pasta with some seasonings. So I think you're going to see more and more products, but maybe package for consumers in a way that allows them to explore with the jackfruit bites or other types of specialty products like a dragon fruit or a star fruit, not just kind of sitting out there by themselves, but now incorporated. The other thing I think you're going to see is a lot more around this 
what we call our powerful produce pairings, where now I'm taking the produce and I'm putting it alongside or suggesting a complement of, let's say, another, what we might call, dietitians call another nutrient-rich food. And so that's something that we're very much looking at. We just did a whole big thing on veggies as vessels. And so mm-hmm. you have some examples of this even on your site where you took squash and created a bowl with the squash. And then we, in this case, we were using potatoes. Another opportunity would be looking at a lot of the nuts or you had a whole program on pulses or other lentils. And so this isn't always about experimentation. This now can be just about pairing produce with other more commonly eaten foods. We just did a whole big produce pairings education session at one of our conferences and we used uh, Christina LaRue from Love and Zest and she helped along with one of the certified master chefs alongside another dietitian named Amy Myrtle Miller and the three of them what they did was they created these recipes that were really partnering produce with let's say something like beef and so beef is consumed at least once per week in 70 to 80 percent of the households in the United States why wouldn't I want produce to be a part of that? You know? So like a stir fry kind of an idea. It could be something like it could. Yeah, it could be something like that. The point is, I think you're going to see more partnerships with produce either as a prepackaged, all you do is add the egg or what about adding this meat where a lot of the, also the seasonings are done for you. So making produce easily actionable is something that I think we're going to see more of coming out of a lot of out of the produce department. I think the other piece that is really interesting is all the flavor combinations. So, for example, Dole Food Company with their bag salads just released a whole kind of new flavors. And this is happening in food service too. You don't just see, for example, limited time offers only for salads in the summer. You're seeing, okay, now what flavor combinations can we pull that don't just mean, you know, summer and fall, but really mean fall, but fall salad. Uh, You see this with, you know, chains like Panera, for example. So I think you're going to see more with consumers interest in plant-based. I think you're going to see fruit and vegetables really trying to eke out to be, have the number one spot there. And I think that's a great thing. And certainly we agree with that given our have a plant movement. And so you're going to see a lot of the fruit and vegetable organizations out there really trying to offer consumers different ways to meet their interest in plant forward cuisines. So more prepared, more paired with other things, and then flavor forward, much more interesting. I think so. I think so. I mean, and then of course, everybody's going to be looking for that inspiration online, right? Because you need to experience that somewhere. Um, A lot of that behavioral research shows if you've experienced it at, let's say, out to eat or at a friend's house and or you've now, you know, seen that, let's say, online, one of Liz's healthy table recipes, and you're like, I can do that. So you've either had it's that cultivation of enjoyment that exposure experience either as a child or an adult that's most likely to be indicative of repeated experience and so i think if this is all coming together in a way to make plants the center of the plate and those plants are fruits and vegetables hooray hooray for fruits and veggies and have a plant everyone We're inviting you to do it. Go for it. Thank you, Wendy. You know, I feel like we've given people lots of tips for achieving that goal. And we don't have to talk numbers. We just have to talk about eating them and enjoying them and feeling proud. So thank you for joining us. Is there anything else you want to share that we haven't touched on? I just want folks to, you know, join this movement, join the conversation. You know, Liz, you give people so many great ideas. You share so much of the expertise of all your guests. And so certainly we'd love to be a part of what you're doing and vice versa. So we encourage people to go to fruitsandveggies.org. Lots of recipes there, but also join the movement online with hashtag have a plant and tag us and be part of that community that's ready to share ideas, but also your inspiration. And all that you have to share is really important to those around you. And it's important to us. 
Wendy, thank you so much for all your wisdom and for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me and thank you to your listeners. And thanks everyone for tuning in. If you love the show, post a review on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Tell a friend about it. Head on over to the show notes. We will have lots of links. I'm going to take you over to the PBH website. We're going to give you lots of resources today. So check out the show notes from today's show. And until next time, thanks for listening to Liz's Healthy Table. Thank you.